bow our heads as we begin our song service. Lord, we are here gathered before your holy presence. In spite of the grief that is within our heart and the pain that we feel at this point in time, Lord, our desire is to sing praises to your name. For through all the times, you are worthy of our praise and honor. As we lift up our voices to glorify your name, May your spirit come down and dwell with us and talk with us. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we're going to share um, just uh, familiar hymns, and you are welcome to sing them in any language that you are comfortable with. I think they will be, uh, the words will be beamed on the, on the projector there, but whichever language is comfortable for you, you can uh, go right ahead. Uh, was that correct? <laughs> Thank you very much for coming um, to this funeral service. To begin our service, I'm going to ask that we please rise in an opening prayer, in an opening song, and then we'll have a prayer afterwards. Those of you with this program, we're going to use hymn 202, Jesus Savior, Pilot Me. So may we please rise as we are led by our chorister and musicians in the opening song, which will be given. And then um, after that, um, we're going to have our opening prayer from um, Uncle Saul Chamboko. And I'm going to ask that those that are going to speak and those that are going to pray, if you may come up front and use the podium where I am exactly so we can be captured. God bless you. Jesus, Savior, pilot me over life's tempestuous sea. I know where's before me roll. I did rock and dredge a storm. Shouting come, must come from me. Jesus, Savior. Oh, it's 
Let us bow our heads for prayer. Mari Baba Varumsoro Kudenga. Mangwana Nanu Tiripano. Nutaku Jisa Mokomei. Nguaya Kadaya Uparazana Shamari Baba. Isi Tsakwa Mut Ijira Makafam. Nice to know this Vakut in a good Makafam by Shirayo Jehovah. Nesu Tineku Kunda Kanatafam by Shira Kadai. Akaske Kutanga Jehovah, Tichi Parazana. Nemi o Makajuana. Tutaku Zunza, Moko Menu, Pangua Inu, Shamar Baba. Apota Kuparazana, Nungu Edu, Shino Misa Panzirai to Panzimbayagi of Zorora, Akamiraino. Isoso Jehovah, Tino Kumbiro of Zorora Mkatima and Zedu. Tino Kumbira of Zoros Wam Katima Fuba Zedu. Tino Kumbira Tari Ro, Ino Tarisa Kuri. Jehovah, Pangua Zakada, it's no Kumbira Maziso and Wona Kena. Pangua Zakada, Jehovah, Tino Kumbira Kundiso, Ino Darika. Yet no Sangara and Ayo Masua Os. Nakupangua Zino Shamar Baba Hana Zedu Zino Rora Hana Zedu Zino Shushkar Fuga Zedu Zino Mania Miviriebi no Nate Shamar Baba Aspangua Zino Jova Tinudag Risa Moko Men Quitra good dresses Chaitika Pangua Yeno Zuez the Gutenda Quedu Wen Nakusimba Quedu Mamur. Chiti patira ishe mwari baba muti patani zene rudo Tira mbeta kapata na seshe taka ita ishoshi Kushika zuareku emisira rashika Pano umwene umwe ishe mwari baba Taka tarisana nenguwa ya kadai Tichi tarisana negamba ratu nengi kichipara zana nawe Jehova iwe zera yu ugamba mkati mekura na makwedu nesuo vano saru Nizikara jesu tinuna mata Amen may be seated. Thank you very much. I want to greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is a, this, one of the saddest moments of any loss when you have to come to the funeral service and it sinks in that our brother has truly departed from the living. But I want you to remember when Christ ascended up to heaven and the disciples were feeling the way we were feeling. An angel came and said, ye men of Galilee, why do you look as if this is the end? Paraphrased my own words. This same Jesus you will see. Now I'm not God, but I can tell you from my own experience with this man, no Masosere, my hope is in seeing him again. This same no Masosere we should see when the, when the Lord comes and the trump shall sound. I would like to just give you a few announcements in case some of you may not know um, this place and not know your way around it. So um, for those who may want to use the ablution facilities, if you go down the aisle on my right, you go down the stairs on the right and turn left. On the left will be the gents, on the, on the right will be the ladies. So those of you who want to use the ablution facilities, please down this aisle, down the stairs, or down this aisle, turn right, down the stairs, left for the gents, and uh, right for the ladies. Um, and we would appreciate it being in the house of God uh, if we could put our phones on, on silent or flight mode um, so we can just reverence the place where we are so we don't have any disturbances coming from there. We also would like you to know that we have some camera work going on we know some of you want to take some pictures and so forth. As long as you're not in the way of those who have been asked to do the job, we will allow you to do that from the comfort of your seats and uh, places that are convenient. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to move on with the program. I'm going to ask um, uh, Sister Tanaka Mashoshere, who is going to be our first speaker for today, to come and give her testimony. And all those that are giving testimonies, please come and give them from the podium so that we can all be captured and the lighting will be as good as the video people would like it to be. God bless you.
Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Dad was very intentional and aggressive about our relationship. All he did speaks to the fact that he was firm in his belief that we really don't have time. And it's true, seeing that I only really got to experience his unconditional love for just over two years. Remembering the first time we met and spoke, it was over a call. And after that conversation, I felt like we'd known each other all our lives. Aggressive may not be the correct word to use, but all I'm really trying to explain is, whenever I was in his presence, in person or otherwise, I felt his unreserved love and attention. He'd always say, Tana, I want you to know how blessed we are to have you in our family, in our lives. But I'll just stop right there and mention how blessed I am to have had a father and dad. He wasn't my father-in-law, he was my father. I can't get into the details of what that means, as it would take forever, but I hope you can understand the difference. He was my blessing because I earnestly prayed for him. My mother would always tell me about the amazing relationship she had with my grandpa, her father in and way before we got married, I prayed for the same. God blessed me with dad. He was all I prayed for and more. It's just that I thought we had time. I didn't tell him this before he passed away, but I wish I had. He needed to know I am the one who was truly blessed. He was my number one ally. He was my friend. I remember when it came to the cultural part of the marriage process, like Kuperekwa, we usually imagined the daughters in law to have a hard time working and cleaning and cooking for everyone. But dad was like, no, not my baby. We had dinner, we prayed, and that was it. He was protective of me. He was totally relaxed and chill when he spoke. He was himself. Just reminiscing on one of the intense conversations he and I had a couple of months ago, we were supposed to continue that conversation in person in December. Before he left the US, he detailed his concerns and fears to me. They were genuine and legitimate. I assured him that all would be well. He then took what I consider a very bold step, step to move back home. And I felt the need to check on him and make sure that his fears and concerns were not overshadowed by our joy of having him back home. Because that had the potential to eat at him if not managed well. So I gave him a call to check in. And in typical dad fashion, that conversation was almost an hour long. So eventually I had to get onto other things and we resolved to continue that conversation in person this December. Sadly, that conversation can't happen anymore. I'll never know what I needed to do to get him to feel better. Dad was always very clear about his intentions and what he wished for us to do, which was to have us all within close proximity to each other so that we could enjoy each other's presence because time is of the essence. I often thought, but Dad, <laughs> you need to be practical. We can't just up and leave Dubai. Why will we do an essay? But it makes sense. It's time like these that get you to reevaluate your priorities in life. He always wished for us to be together, singing, praising God, and we had planned to do exactly that in December. He 
always wish to have you cook for him, just as I did when we visited our home. My time was too short. Uh, so we're here, we're singing, but he's not here to witness that anymore. I won't reiterate a lot of things that have been mentioned already by all those who've spoken since the very beginning of our meetings. Because that too held true in my experience with dad. I'll just allude to one incident when dad visited, visited us in Dubai. It was just before um, me and Lentina's wedding. Um, so I was trying to get my outfit done and um, the day, I think the day after he arrived, I needed to go and pick it up. So we told dad, okay, dad, we're just gonna dash out, have dinner, and then go and pick up my outfit. But when we got to the tailors, the outfit wasn't half what it was supposed to be, and I was fuming. This was literally days before the wedding, and I didn't have an outfit. So, to cut the long story short, Dave and I had the conversation. We're like, okay, only one of two things. It's either we leave the dress with the guy and he pays us back the material that we gave him to purchase the material, or we leave with the dress and we don't pay him anything. So dad was quiet the whole, we were talking about it before we even got there. And um, we got there, we tried to be nice about it spoke to the guy. He kind of did acknowledge he hadn't done such a good job. Dad chimed in, giving suggestions of what can be fixed, where it can be fixed. And I was like, no, Dad, I'm done, I'm done. I just have to look for another outfit. So we eventually we left the shop. And uh, <clears throat> So he was like, okay, so you've decided not to pay this guy. He's actually done some work, yeah? He's like, yeah, dad, he has, but you know, he didn't do a good job. <laughs> so, so I, I can't, can't pay him for that. that. In any case, I've given him money for material, so that's his baby. Then he asked us one question. What is the righteous thing to do? We, we paused and looked each other, at each other. And... Um, he asked again, what is the righteous thing to do? This guy has done a job, so you ought to give him something for the labor he's put into, into it. And from that moment, that just stuck with me. That dad was big enough to forget about how he felt in any situation. He was big enough to look at the other person and what they deserved and do whatever he could to make sure that they got what they deserved. So yeah, one of my main learning points, there are plenty, but one, one of those is just that, that we, we ought, ought to live, live a righteous life, to always ask, ask ourselves, ourselves what, what is, is the righteous, righteous thing, thing to do. do. I, I miss him, and, and I always will. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Uh, that's Mrs. Masotere, the wife to the firstborn of Mr. Masotere Noel, and Mrs. Masotere. Thank, Thank you very much for that. that. And we're going to ask the um, Zimiri family, Nadia's uh, Tanaka and her sisters, to please come and give us a song that um, is fitting for this occasion. As they are coming, um, those of you who may have missed yesterday's memorial service, um, my mother was watching from Zimbabwe and she said, I've never heard testimonies like that about anyone in my life. Because Noel was special. I think you can come up and pick up some microphones. Some of the highlights from last night, faith is the currency of heaven. And Noel, as far as I know, was the richest man I have ever seen in terms of that faith. Everyone was made to feel like his favorite. 
are some of the highlights from last night. I will be sharing one or two for those of you who were not there last night. The Zimiri ladies will give us a special item. Life is easy when we're upon the mountain and you've got peace of mind like you've never known. But things change when you're down in the valley. Don't despair, cause you're never alone. For the God on the mountain is still God in the valley. When things go wrong, he'll make them It's all come so easy, cause life's at its best. Now we're down in the valley, with trials and temptations. But that's when your faith is really put to the test. For the God on the mountain is still God in the valley. When things go wrong, he'll make them right. And the God in the good times is still God in the bad times. say some of you may have looked and said are these the Zimiri sisters did he make a mistake they do look like sisters don't they if it wasn't for the platinum highlights in the hair of the mother not the gray hair but the platinum highlights you wouldn't see the difference thank you very much the Zimiri sisters may God bless you for being such a blessing and um, when uh, Tanaka who happens to be my daughter too was dating some other, someone from somewhere else. I was worried. But when I learned that he was dating my friend's son, David, I was happy. You have a good man, Tanaka. David, you have a good woman. May God bless you. Those of you who were there last night may have noticed that um, out of the testimonies that were given, 
by the sons and daughters of Rama Shoshere. Um, by the way, Mashoshere said to me one day, I prayed that I would never have daughters. And, and, and I, I, I said, really? Because I've got a daughter first and two sons. He says, I asked God for sons, and God gave me sons. Uh, and now I know why he's got sons only, because with sons you get many daughters, and he's got many daughters. So um, I'm going to ask Daniel, because he's the one son who didn't speak yesterday because he's going to come up and give a eulogy about his father, Daniel. This is your time, and he's, as he's coming up, Masosere was not only a, an evangelist, he lived for God. Those of you with the program, I want you to see his payoff line, his motto, his life, to know God and to make him known, and that's what he lived for, Daniel. Good morning to you all. My name is Daniel Mashoshere, his second born. My dad and me had plenty in common, including the fact that we both quite enjoyed the sound of our own voices. So as you might expect, I wasn't asked by the family to do the eulogy, I volunteered. While I enjoy speaking, this is not the speech I ever hoped to give. But what is true is I am still honored to give it. The outpouring of love and admiration from you all has been absolutely inspiring and heartwarming. Thank you. Tatenda, Kelebucha, Bayadanki, and Kos. Today I want to tell you of a man who lived free and loved ardently. When Frank Sinatra sang My Way, when the Bible in John 8:36 said, whom the son says free is free indeed, my dad took, owned, and lived these words. So where to start? From going to school, primary, through high school, and university, while not having the means to do so, he was not a captive of his circumstances. He lived free. My grandmother worked that old sewing machine late into the night, stitching together pieces of cloth to make a few garments to sell. She broke her back to educate and feed her children. She loved ardently. Her self-sacrifice, dedication, and work ethic made an indelible impression on my young father. Reflecting, I realized how remarkable it was that my father learned what it was to be a father from watching his single mother, and he too grew to love ardently. He lived free and married the girl he wanted to marry. She wasn't Zimbabwean. I mean, as far from a shingle as the East is from the West. Three boys later, he still loved her like it was before David. As a father, he encouraged us to dream and to see ourselves not as we were, but as we could be. Faith in God would fund the gap between our aspirations and our current state. So yes, we drove to university to register with zero money for registration. And by the close of registration, we were registered. You can call me later for details on these stories of providence uh, for there are many like it. Like his mother, there was no ounce of energy spared in pursuit of the sustenance and well-being of his family, both immediate and extended. He loved ardently. With a bank balance of zero, he even accommodated our extracurricular interests, funding our teenage boy band to record an album and tour with him as he preached. As a grandfather, he spent his last year chauffeuring his grandson from school to the library, to his piano lesson, all the while stuffing his grandkids with more candy and chips 
than he ever allowed us to have for the entire duration that we lived in his house. The day he got hit by a car, he was on his way to buy a toy for his grandson. He loved ardently. In his early 20s, he could have chosen any path, including one that offered luc lucrative pecuniary reward, status, and even fame. But not my dad. He chose the path of most resistance. Instead of furthering his studies overseas, he returned to Zimbabwe to teach, and in short order, to moonlight as a preacher slash literature evangelist. I mean, these are the sort of mind-boggling choices only a free man could make. He lived free. As if life as a teacher and moonlighting preacher wasn't hard enough, in 1991, my dad left Anderson to become a full-time evangelist, which meant he was now a full-time employee of G.O.D. Corporation, which to those of us who live on Earth literally translated meant he was unemployed. Again, these are the choices of a free man. All this ostensibly perilous decision-making begs the question, why? You see, the death of his mother and brother, whom he loved ardently, left him longing to see them again. And he found hope only in the promise of a second coming of Jesus and the resurrection. It is here that he found the burden to know God and to make him known. Nothing else mattered. If you didn't have a heaven to offer him, you didn't have the currency to wield any influence over him. He had found purpose, and with that purpose, he found freedom. I remember sometimes remarking to my brothers or mom and saying, who does this man really listen to? I mean, as in who can change his mind once it's made up? And the answer was, well, unless you are God the Father, Son, or Holy Ghost, your odds, your odds are as close to zero as you can get without being a positive number. He lived free. You see, my father only feared God. He didn't fear the loss of friends, a job, and its income, the loss of financial support for his ministry. He lived free. He was not beholden to any man, yet he was willing to work with all men, any and everywhere, across the entire spectrum and range of status, ability, and capacity. He was a maverick with a vision and an urgent mission. From distributing Bibles and Bible literature from South Africa to Madagascar to the Congo, to preaching in more countries than I have time to name, to recording music, running evangelistic campaigns in the street on the flatbed trailer of a truck, to organizing crusades in rural Zimbabwe with a tent, a generator, and chairs to go, to speaking on college campuses on weekends, all the while running a one-man fundraising te team for the work. He tried his hand at trucking, farming, the taxi business. He even sold cell phones at some point. All these job titles were consolidated in one man and made him practically unemployable for any human employer. He was the kind of guy only God could manage. He ran hard. He ran fast for God and family. All that said, as I conclude, I would be remiss if I left you here with an impression that my father was himself the second coming of Jesus Christ, because he wasn't. He was not perfect. I watched him up close and personal. Far from it. What is true, what is true though, is where he failed, he failed forward. His heart always leaned in the direction of virtue. So as we lay him to rest and live here today, I pray that we too would fail forward, that we too may be seized with the fierce urgency of now, that we too would live free, love ardently, and die empty. 
I pray that we would all truly know God and live to make him known. This was my father. Thank you. I'm a father too. And I'd be more than proud of these distinguished fine gentlemen that have walked down the stage. Who went to the best of universities, are doing well in life, and may the Lord bless Mrs. Mashosere, who is the only one who was able to handle such level of power and faith. May God bless you, Mrs. Mashosere. May God bless you and may his countenance continue to shine upon you. Boys, your father would have wanted you to look after this woman because she was behind all that Marshall said it did. May God bless you. Now, the boys were supposed to sing. Um, some of you may not know how talented they are. They are distinguished musicians. I, uh, being a, a singer in shower power, always wished that these boys would sing in our group in shower power. Uh, we got one of our wishes fulfilled when Daniel came and had a short stint with us and sang at a concert. It's on record, and uh, I can gladly say Mashosere's son sang with Shao Power. Um, thank you very much. Now, Mashosere was a multi-talented human being, distinguished. One of the things that came out yesterday was that he was a classy man. The sons say he ran his life with a zero balance, but those of you who don't understand faith and how God works, you won't understand that that's not a zero balance. That's an infinite balance because you're running on God's account. Masosere said would drive all the way from Guero and say, God sent me to see you. And whatever God sent him to do would be accomplished. So he ran on the balance of God's account. His children were schooled, went to universities, did their masters on the account of God. And God will continue to look after him and his children and their children's children. So Masusere was a musician too. He recorded two albums. The sons were meant to sing, but we're going to play a song from uh, one of his albums. It's a Shona one. It's a song that if played today would make more sense than when he recorded it a few decades ago. It's a song called Gorerino Rakasiana Namamwe. Morizue Munda Unza Mabasa. I'm going to ask the Melvi team to please play that song all the way as we listen and be blessed by one of Masosere's many talents. Sa ne 
Kama na kacheche Nichako na zangu Ondiko siya maumwe Kana ndakura Chieza chokudenga Nichachinzu isisa Ondiko sema mepuka na mandirera Thank you very much. Abide with me. Abide with me. Next on our program is a man that stood by Masosere, understood his vision. Yesterday we mentioned that Elder Masosere was perhaps a decade ahead of his time in his vision and the church did not understand his evangelistic thirst and thrust. And as he was trying to do things urgently, because time is something God told him is not on our side, and we all know that time is not on our side. He wanted by yesterday for the world to know that Jesus is coming and Jesus loves us. And so the church thought he was a madman. And the church thought this man was threatening their positions and their thrust, which was slow and lethargic as we know it. But uh, Pastor Hall asked me to say this testimony again because he was one of the people who helped us in one of, one of many evangelistic campaigns. One of them was such that we would go into a city. We started off, I think, in Guero or Kwekwe. We block a whole uh, avenue uh, in, in town, like 1st Street or 2nd Street, put chairs this side, cars were not allowed in. They would bring a 30-ton truck. 30-ton truck would be laid out across, and that would be the stage. Masosha had a passion for PA systems, so it started building PA systems. We would load PA systems on that truck, and then shower power would come and start singing. They would put chairs, and people would gather because people loved music. And people would gather in their numbers. And after the singing, Masosare would come and he would preach and make calls. And many people were saved. We didn't do it in one city. We didn't do it in Gweru. We didn't do it in Kwekwe alone. We moved to Mutare. We went to Mashingo. We went to Rishawane. We had a privilege of staying at Pastor Hall's uh, grand or parents' place. And, and we had something in Rishawane. We even went into rural um, Zimbabwe in Zaka. We did similar programs, and uh, uh, he took us in his little VW car back in the day, I remember it, drove across. We did something similar in rural South Africa. This was a man who loved the gospel. And so one of his friends, brothers, who is here is Pastor Robert Hall, and I'm going to ask him to please come and give us the word for this morning. Pastor Hall, this is your time, and thank you for being a friend to our brother and father. God bless you.
Let us pray. Eternal Father, amazing God, we thank you, Lord, for the life of Noel Masosere, his ministry, his passion, his reason for living, his desires. Thank you, Lord, for the commitment that he had towards the kingdom of God. And as we go through the service this morning, we pray, Father, that you will be here to comfort us and to give us assurance that indeed there is a land that is fairer than day. And by night we can see it afar. Help us to have faith that we will always look to you, our source of health and strength, our source of one day spending eternity with you. Comfort we with us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Maybe before I open God's word, I just wanted to first of all say in Shona, Amuziwi, the relationship, Yetanga Tinayo, Noel and myself. Noel made it his duty to always call me, to keep in touch with me, to visit with me, and to discuss what was deep in his heart and in his mind. We spend lots of time talking, praying, you know, and just uh, thinking out aloud of what we could do, how it could be done, where it would happen, and the means of putting it together. The means were never an issue because he said everything belonged to God. And so many things happened. But the things that really stand out for me was his love for people. People need the Lord, he would say to me. People need the Lord and we need to reach people, especially young people. We need to be able to help them to be ready. He had a passion for young people and being able to reach them and minister to them so that they would be able to have eternal life. My children, my girls, you should know, remember Togo, my girls went through Masoswere's hands. He schooled them. He exposed them to Christian education. He challenged them to excellence, higher than the highest human thought can reach is God's ideal for his children. Godliness, God-likeness, that's the goal to be reached, he would challenge them. My daughters would just come home and say, Ah, Dad, Mr. M, Mr. M is our favorite teacher. Because he had a passion, he knew how to work with young people, he knew how to challenge young people. His sons, as they stood there, I was looking at you boys and saying to myself, he would always tell me, Pasta, <laughs> no, or something else, Pasta, these are your boys, these are your sons. Please be there for them just as you are there for me. And I know that everything you are today, everything you experienced as you, as you pursued your careers, as you studied, as you exposed yourself to education, everything was because of him, but more than him, because of her. And I will always remind him, I would always remind him, no, you can only do and accomplish what you're doing because of Togo. And so, uh, 
I'm sit, standing here and looking at you and, and I'm saying to myself, if it wasn't because of you, Noel would never have been able to be what he was, to accomplish what he did. But you gave him that latitude. You gave him that space. You helped him to be the free man that he was and to, and to just do what he believed God had called him to do. And finally, <laughs> yeah, we arranged a, uh, call it a Zunde, call it an evangelistic crusade. We arranged an amazing event in Chiredzi. He came down and together with my son-in-law and myself, we talked, we went on the, on, the, you know, on the waters. We had a boat and we went on the waters and we spent some time on the water, just talking and thinking and planning and uh, arranging how we would go about this. And uh, then he said to me, Pastor, we just need one truck with a trailer. And with speakers, and uh, you know, with an amplifier, and uh, we can turn Chiredzi upside down. Uh, you had no idea how God poured out His Spirit upon Chiredzi. And uh, He said to me, "Where are we going to have it, Pastor? What's your vision?" I said, "We're going to have it right in the." in the center of Tsovani Township. And we put those speakers and we had the trailer decked out there and we had the most amazing event in Chiredze, in the history of Chiredze. They could hear those speakers every night for a distance of almost seven kilometers. Every night. The drunkards would come out of the pubs because we were right at, we had it right at the market square. We wanted to reach all of Tsovani. We wanted to reach everyone, including, including the untouchables, the ones we never go and visit. That was the passion that my friend, my brother, God's man, God's worker, no Masosere had the passion he had for God's work. And you know, every night I would watch. And that Zunde was in, in Shona, it was presented in Shona. I would watch these men come and sit outside. People in the township would come out and sit in their doors to listen to that message without coming to the meeting place. But when it was time for, you know, for decision making, they would filter in and come. And what an amazing experience. I'm just sharing with you something that moved me. Something just mes you know, mesmerized me of how when we are called to ministry, anything and everything is possible. That was Noel Masosere. And I thank his wife that she, he was able, she was able to allow him to do that. It's not every woman who can do that. It's not every woman, every mother. No, it's not. It's not every father who can do that, guys. It's not every worker who can do that. It is a special man called by God to do a special work. I salute no. One of a kind. One of a kind. I salute him because not even the church understood him. But I thank God that I had a little, a little bit of a premonition as I watched him, as I listened to him, as I observed him. I realized that this was a special man with a special mission to accomplish. Yes, and when things were a little difficult for him, I tried by God's grace to be there for him. You know, sometimes God doesn't call us to become orators 
God does not call us to become special mouthpieces. God just expects you to be a friend, to be a fellow soldier, to stand by somebody, to give a certain support, and to be an, an encourager, an encouragement. And that's the kind of relationship I had with Noah. And as uh, God used him, I know there are many crowns in heaven. I took a long time to say that. But I wanted you to know that uh, he had a special place in my heart. <laughs> I was reading last night for my own, just to catch up with Noel Masosere. And this is my message to you. Every day, without fail, Noel Masosere would send messages, messages of hope, messages of encouragement, messages of, uh, you know, of, uh, of uh, us being beware, of uh, being beware of the wicked one. And the... Uh, he would say we are at a war. Life is made up of a, of a war, a battleground. And I'm reading one that he just sent the other day. It is Satan's intention to kill and to take us to hell with him. To make void the free mercy and the grace and the access that God has given us to glory. And then he writes in his own words, my persuasion, that's Noah, my persuasion is rather to be dead than to lose and be lost to God. <laughs> there is nothing to be gained by putting ourselves under papal jurisdiction because God deserves our worship. And then he talks about life can be a hellfire. God will find a way out of the fire. He will find a way out of the lion's den, but he needs us to stand and to stand firm. That was no sending messages like this, encouraging us to be faithful, to hold on, and to be in, on the Lord's camp. <laughs> Yeah, he says, uh, heaven is a far better deal than the access to pubs and amenities for a very short season. And it's a very, very short season. Uh, there's so many things that he, he would send. But he always kept in touch with us. He always informed us. He spent sleepless nights writing, writing. Spent a lot of time sending information so that we can be aware of the times in which we are living and how we need to, uh, to be ready. Mm. I'm reading just a short sentence. It says, it is an amazing time that we are in. We do not have a closed and shut case. There is no doctor in the house. Confusion reigns in the day. It says, it is time for us to draw nigh to God and his work. I don't know of anyone who was an encourager in my life, as Noel was. And of course, there were lots of uh, uh, audible messages that he would send. And I'm not going to play any of these for you. Just one, um, just one last one. Um, yeah, maybe two. He says, attitude. Attitude is a very important thing. Attitude is everything now. Pray for the right attitude. Pray for strength so that you will maintain the right attitude to God. That's my preacher. That's my pastor. That's my fellow colleague. That's one who was able to see through the challenges that we face from day to day and help us to be, to be able to, uh, 
to be ready for the kingdom of God. Okay, yeah. I will jump all of this, okay. <coughs> all right, let me leave this alone. Um, he had a concern, a concern for what's happening, you know, with this COVID. Uh, this menu, I'm almost going to say manufactured um, concern of COVID disease, COVID-19, and the impact it had upon the church and upon God's people and how we ought to be ready because COVID was more than just an illness. It is a sickness, but to know COVID was a means by which um, the world is being brought face to face with what's coming ahead for the people of God. How we will be restricted, how we will be controlled, and how we will lose our rights and our freedoms, and we will be forced to uh, obey whatever um, we are instructed to do. And he was always challenging God's people. Don't succumb to the pressure of the beast and the beast powers. Don't allow yourself to be controlled so that you will, you will uh, let down your guard and give up your religious freedom. And um, yeah, so he was always talking about that. And he was saying, Satan will not rest until... He has taken us down. So be ready. And the last one I have recorded on my phone is November 2. November 2. And he's saying, please read Revelation chapter 17. Because the coming of the Lord, it is even at the door. November 2. Pray. Pray against the enemy, uh, the plans of the enemy. Pray. And if this doesn't shake us, what will shake us? What will help us to prepare? Three people I want to talk about this morning. The first one I want to talk about in just a few minutes is the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul, an amazing man. A man who had gone through you know, a round, a complete roundabout turn. From being a persecutor, he became a preacher of righteousness. righteousness. And you know the story of how he was on the Damascus road, on his way towards Damascus, with the intention of going to persecute and obliterate this Christian band of people who believed in God, who believed in a Christ. And as Paul was on his way down. You know the story of how God allowed this light, bright light, to arrest his attention, threw him down to the ground, and there for the first time submits himself and says, Speak, Lord, for your servant heareth. And the Bible goes on to describe all the things that Paul did after that conversion on the Damascus Road. But I'm interested, you know, in, in the last statements he makes before he exits the world, the earth. Paul is reviewing his life. He's gone through places. He's been thrown in prisons, in dungeons. Uh, he's been mocked. He's been jeered at. Uh, he's been uh, castigated. He stands, at least he, he sits down and he pens these words as he reviews, as he reflects. He says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there's going to be a crown of righteousness for me. There is a crown of righteousness. 
not only for me, but for all those who believe and are faithful to God. But I have fought a good fight. And as I was thinking about no, and reflecting on his life, and the energy and the passion that he had, I saw an, an apostle Paul. I saw him go from place to place. I saw him go into churches. I saw him go into communities. He was always urged, there was an urgency to go in and help people to kill. Pastor, hakuna nguwa. Hapana nguwa. Nguwa ya pera. That was his, he was always passionate. There is no more time. There is no more time. <laughs> I, I wrote something here. Um, um, I think it's on your screen also. It was on your screen. His passion was, we need to know God. We need to make God known. And we must rally together and use every facility and put things together. <laughs> he would say, that money that God has given your family is not yours, Pastor. It's God's money given to you or your family so that you can be able to help people to know the Lord. And he, he got through, he got through to the family. And they supported his ministry. I thank God that my family was aware of his mission, his purpose, and they supported him. To, to know God, to make him known, and I'd like to add to, uh, to have God, uh, to love God with all of your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength. That was his passion. Um, the Apostle Paul, as he was reviewing, he says, I have fought a good fight. I have really been passionate about bringing salvation, life, and light to people. I have been faithful to what God has called me. And because of that faithfulness, I know, I know that there is a crown that is laid up for me. No knew God. Noel had a close relationship with God. We never fully understood it, but he fully embraced that. He lived for that. But amidst that, Noel also had a humility that amazed me. He could relate to the young people. He could be on their level. He could just inspire them with a few words, just like he inspired his boys. Inspire them to, you know, to reach their potential as I quoted, higher than the highest human thought can reach. God's, that's God's desire, God's passion and ambition for you. I'm also reminded of another man, a second man, his name was Job. The Bible says there was a man, a man, amazing man. To the community, he just was another man, but God, God's man. This man was able to write amazing things when his friends were all against, you know, and questioning what he was doing. Curse God and die. Ko Shamwari. Why are you worried about that? I would hear some ministers say, church ministers, ah, Zeno, ah, no, was, was Rasika. He's competing with us. I'm saying, competing? But as they saw, and I saw, and we saw, we saw a man who had a, you know, a passion, but that passion was really uh, um, underlined by the idea that he knew whom he believed. That's what Job said. Job says, I know in whom I believe. 
And I know that at that day, I shall see him with my own eyes. Not through the eyes of someone else. I shall see him with my own eyes. Because he loved me. He cares for me. I know him. Job loved God. Job was faithful to God. Job was faithful to the call that God had placed. Even though he lost everything and really had a zero balance in his everyday account. Job was able to say, what he has given, he has taken. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And I saw in the life of Noah, I saw a Job who was not really worried about the earthly possessions that we so much clamor for. His concern was to know God, to make him known and to share his, uh, his truth with them. Um, he prayed for people. He was committed. Sorry, I'm just going ahead of myself. The third person is Noah. Noah was a man who loved his family. He prayed for his sons always. He was committed to his ministry. Yes, he was a pastor of the most unlikely people. He visited prostitutes. He visited people at the market square. He visited them in the church, at our schools. He visited them in the countryside through Zundes. He was a pastor to the most unlikely, and yet he was a pastor to the cause of God. He was a man of great faith, a man of tremendous strength. I always was amazed by the energy and the good health, although he was a little sickly, but he had a lot of good health. He was always complaining, I have to eat right. I have got to sleep right. I've got to live right. And some of us who had problems with the, uh, the fleshly foods of Egypt, you would say, Pastor, that will kill you. Anyway, um, yes, he had great strength when he was doing God's word. He was a man of prayer. He was a man of prayer. And his prayers moved us. They moved us. He had a great passion a passion for people and their salvation. And that, that work was a short work and that it should be done urgently. And so I'm here just to say one thing because of the life of this man. I'm here to remind you that if there is anything that really encapsulated the life of this man, it was, we do not have time. That which we must do, we must do quickly. In the words of the song, oh brother, be faithful. Soon Jesus will come, for whom we have labored so long. We need to be able to make him known, who is our Savior, Jesus Christ. We do not have we do not have the luxury of time. We need to do what we need to do now. Let me read this. I want, dear Lord, a heart that's true and clean, a sunlit heart with not a cloud between, a heart like thine, a heart divine, a heart as white as snow on me, dear Lord, a heart like this bestow. I want, dear Lord, a love, a love that feels for all, a deep, strong love that answers every call. A love like thine, a love divine, a love for high and low. Oh, 
Dear Lord, give me a love like this. And finally, I want, dear Lord, a hope. A hope, steadfast and sure. A hope that holds to things that will endure. A hope in heaven. A hope in thee. A hope that's bright and clear. A hope that dispels doubt and conquers every fear. I want, dear Lord, such a hope. May God give you such a love. May God give you such a, um, such a steadfast and sure hope. A hope that will endure. A hope that will save us. If there is something that I know we will priv we'll be privileged to do, to have, yes, to do, is that if we are faithful, when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, when the dead in Christ shall rise, we will have the joy and the privilege of meeting no. Spending eternity with him. And he's going to remind us. Ah, you remember. You needed to have done that. He will remind us of a work that we should have done, that we did not work, uh, that we, we did not do. May God allow Noel to rest in peace. And indeed he rests in peace. But I pray for his wife that you might love the Lord your God with all your heart and be faithful to your God. I want to say to his sons, I want to say to you boys, I can't see you from here, but I know you're here. There you are. I want to say, you guys, you had an, an amazing, extraordinary father. He prayed regularly and consistently for you. He spent every dime that he had for you. He made tremendous negotiations. He became a freelance man so that he can be able to put you through college, through university, and establish you. May you do him proud. May you take good care of mom. May you be faithful to his ministry. And may God bless you with your families. We will always be there for you. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Hall. What does the church say? Thank you very much. I'm going to ask the congregation to please stand as we sing a song that is going to be beamed up, which is called uh, In That Sweet By and By. And then after that, I'm going to ask your Yolanda to please come and give us a closing prayer. Then I will give us the announcements of how we'll move on from then on. Shall we rise for hymn number 50?
my prayer that on that be beautiful, beautiful show, we shall meet that. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, our hearts are broken. We don't know how we're going to go on without Ted. But Lord, we pray for strength. We pray that you give us the courage to take that torch and run with it forward. Lord, we thank you for the life of dad. We pray, Lord, that we ourselves, having met him, may also reflect you in our lives. We pray that we may carry on with the ministry that he was so passionate about. I pray for Ma, Lord, give her the strength she needs to move forward. I pray for David. I pray for Daniel, I pray for Derek, I pray for the grandkids, and I pray for the family and friends at large, that you may bless each and every one in a special way. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. This marks the end of our church service. And uh, before we head out and have our body viewing, and then we head out to the graveyard, I'm going to ask uh, Brother Enoch Masosere, the brother, young brother, to Elder Noel to come up and give us a vote of thanks while we're here, before we depart. And while he's coming, I want us to know that uh, we're going to the cemetery, which is about 54 as, as he's coming up. Um, as he's, um, we're going to the cemetery, which is um, about 54 minutes from where we are. It's next to French Hook, Eugene, Eugene Museum, 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 the graveyard is called Huguenot. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Huguenot. Um, Huguenot gravesite. So those of you who have Google Maps, you can Google it, or you can just follow the procession. Allow me to just thank everyone for this beautiful service, all the testimonies. But I know there is a vote of thanks coming up. Um, and um, immediately after the uh, vote of thanks, the musicians are going to be singing. I'm going to ask that we start the body viewing from the back so that we then leave the family to do the last viewing and, um, and, and take their time while doing that without rushing them. So 
We'll just start with the rows at the back. Row by row, we'll be going in. Those of you who are able to can view the body. Those who can't, it's okay. We can just uh, march out. So thank you very much, and God bless you. Apologies, um, there's just uh, one correction. The body viewing is going to be done at the graveyard. So um, from here, after the vote of thanks, we're going to have the musicians sing as we march out and get into our cars and follow um, the hearse as we go to the graveyard. May God bless you. Let's, uh, let's just conclude this uh, in this manner that the foundation of the Lord stands firm and sure. Amen. Having this seal that says the Lord knows who are his. And um, there's no doubt using human judgment, and I think God can confirm that Noel was his child. Um, also, the Lord says, love him with all your heart, your strength, and your soul. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. It's such a gain to die in the Lord. And Noel did live this. And um, we would like to end it in this manner that there is a greater life to come. And Noel did present this, this platform. Um, Noah did present this platform for a greater life that is coming. And um, sadly, we have come to this point where we need to, to say goodbye to, to Noel. Um, and I would like to thank uh, everyone First of all, let's thank the Lord for giving us Noel to be part of us, to live this life. It could have been someone else, but we'd like to thank and celebrate with God, giving us those 60 plus life years for Noel to be with us. And um, secondly, I would like to thank um, Mrs. Marshall Shere. Um, I take Noel as is the kinds of Martin Luther, for him to do what he did, he needed a wife who was very supportive. And thank you so much, Zukuru. Um, otherwise, we would not be talking about uh, him in this manner. And also, it's very difficult to, to have such kind of testimonies. Sometimes we struggle to find, to talk something good about somebody when he dies. But there was so much to talk about Noel. Um, thank you so much. And the boys, uh, you are just an evidence, an exhibit of the work that, that happened. So we'd like to thank the Lord for creating you guys. And may you continue to stand strong. And also, I'd like to thank um, the greater tribe of Noel. When I mean tribe, I mean we always want to be so close, related, affiliated to him as blood relatives to him. But I think he had a bigger tribe which belonged to the kingdom of God. Friends, uh, acquaintances, and uh, the blood. Thank the greater tribe for all the things that have, have happened has, and have happened. Um, there were people who were supporting this work from, uh, from behind. We, we can't do this kind of service or services without some financial support. So let me get time to thank all those people who did support financially and the people who actually participated as well in terms of participating in all the programs that we started last week on Friday. And we had some Zoom meetings that ended 
uh, on Wednesday night. And um, yesterday we had the memorial service. And then I'd like to thank all those people who came yesterday and all the people who participated on, um, by watching on the screen online. So without wasting much time, I would like to say once again, thank you so much. And um, may God continue to bless you and learn from Noel a life of simplicity and God-loving. Amen. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more And the morning breaks eternal bright and
in there. 